This episode of Transmission Folklore has content warnings for the following. Family arguing, discussion of family separation, implied medical and familial transphobia, ableism towards an autistic person, and discussion of emotional abuse. Please do what you need to do to take care of yourself. The Lavender Lemonade Collective presents... Transmission Folklore You're positive this is an experience you can deal with right now? Nope. We don't have to do this. Sorrel, you know your parents. What if Adeline is the only one who can help me? You didn't want to get Bianca involved when we were in New Orleans. Why would you want to get Adeline involved now? She raised me. Like, Bianca did too, but she was gone by the time I was ten. Adeline consistently was there. She has to know something. You might be a changeling. I've considered the possibility. It would explain my asthma and allergies. All Fae are pretty sickly, since, since humans started using iron for everything. Rowan was bitching about it. But, like, I think she'd have to know. I mean, Rowan had to have some early warning signs we could look at. I just... I just don't see this being a thing she could have missed. When I came out, she said she knew since I was three. But she was going to wait for me to find out. She knew you were gay since three. She knew I was trans when I was three. When I was little, she said I wanted to dress up in all of Bianca's pre-transition clothes. That doesn't tell her anything. <sighs> I think she just wanted to have that vibe of being all-knowing and very cool. Like, she got really upset at Bianca once, right before the divorce. Apparently Bianca was always trying to be the cool mama and never let Adeline shine. Jeez, I thought my parents were complicated. It's rough like that sometimes. So is Claire going to be here too? I don't know. Mom and Claire have been rocky lately. Damn. You wanted to meet her? Sorta. I never get to know this much family drama. Emery didn't share, and I still don't have a conceptual picture of Rowan and Horatia's family. Do they not talk about their family? Family just looks different, you know? Right. Totally. <sighs> Ready to go in? Not even a little bit. We can keep the story kind of vague. We don't need to mention Emery or imminent danger. We can just ask about the wings. The wings are the thing I am most worried about. What if she thinks they're ugly? I'll pull out the tail and she can think something else is ugly. <laughs> Your tail isn't ugly. It's orange. I like orange. I literally look like a scaly carrot. <laughs> oh my god, you're a scaly. No! You are! What are you doing up here? Oh, hi. Came for a visit, Claire. And who is this? Sorrow Hudson. Are they? Right here. Not dating. You'd be lucky to date my brother. I'm good. I promise. Is mom home? Adeline is... Not here. Yikes. What happened? She just started talking shit about Bianca. I told her that was not okay, and she tried to make me feel bad. Well, I birthed you. You should be on my side. You live here. Bianca hasn't even kept in touch. Like, first, yeah, she has. Second, Bianca is also my biological mother. Like, whatever. Anyway, she got all huffy and went to the store. We're not even out of anything. She just wanted to punctuate her final words. Yikes. Get out of the car. Come on inside and check out what I've done with everything. She let you change everything around? She might have started working like 16-hour shifts, taking advantage of how tired she is. That's not nice. He's been pulling bullshit like that on me this whole trip. Did you drive Pira all the way up here? The whole way. Except through South Dakota. He got sick. He was banned from the driver's seat for a day. He'd use any excuse to make me drive Pira as a kid. Claire. Really? It's the truth. It was annoying. 
Anyway, I'll make you guys some chicken nuggies. We haven't gone shopping in a few days, so it's a mess. We'll be in soon. Give us a sec. Okay, cool. I'll get it started. <laughs> she seemed nice. Mom might be out for days. When they fight, it's bad. Claire's too much like Mama. Bianca? Yeah. I assume you're more like Adeline? I'm not like either of them. They're both very strong women, and I am none of that. Yeah, you are. I mean, not a woman, but you're strong as fuck. You got hit by a Tesla and got stronger. I guess so. I mean, even on a not supernatural level, you're, you drive yourself now. Your sister said you didn't do that before. Well, yeah. I've been growing since before I met you. Me too. Like, right before I met you. So yeah, I threw out the ugly beige and sad purple plaid curtains and replaced them with a soft gray. I replaced the table too. Don't tell mom this, but I may have purposely broken the old table. Like, unfixable broken. Her ugly blue table? Why would anyone have a blue table? I mean, it can be cute, but not the way Adeline did it. You shouldn't break stuff. That's so... That costs money. Carter, it's chill. She said because she only has one kid to deal with now, and I have my own job and help provide, she can afford some of the changes. Besides, I bought the new table. It's going with me when I move. It's not like she cares anymore. I might paint the outside of the house, too. No! Why not? I like the color. Look, don't change everything while I'm gone. I want to come back and feel like I'm home. This has never been a home. Not since Bianca left. Move down south. Live with Bianca. Um, no. It's way too hot down there. It's stifling here. I'm not going to move in with Bianca. I want to live somewhere that's my own. Maybe it's Missouri, maybe it's California, but it's not here, and it's not New Orleans. I'm not going to keep being a pawn. You're not a pawn. You don't see the fights that go on here. She said if I go to college closer to Bianca than her, I was proving I love Bianca more, and her worst fears as a mother would be true. Is this today's fight? Yep. That's why she's not here. Golly. It's been an eventful few hours. So what are you up here for? For a visit. Yeah, you don't visit with no call in the middle of a semester. I just need to talk to mom about something. Ask her some medical questions. Is your doctor giving you beef again for starting tea? I'll take them down. No, Claire, it's it's like serious. Should I be worried? Maybe. Um, I don't know. No matter what, neither of you should be worried. Bad die job gets to know, but your own sister... I see. I... I, um... Carter, she wants to know. Go ahead and tell her. I can't tell her. Fine, I will. Claire, it's the lactose intolerant poop stuff. Ew! I tried to be discreet. He did. Fine, you did, but... Gross. I just really need to talk to Mom about it. It's a big deal right now. My colon is threatened. God, you're the grossest boy ever. <laughs> Claire, hate to break it to you. All boys are gross. I've never met a single one who wasn't. Oh, God. The least you could have done was check the pantry and texted me. Instead, you invite... Carter? Hi, Mom. Carter! What happened to Fira? I didn't even recognize her. Just a lot of wear and tear. Um, drivers in Houston are completely savage. I'm a more aggressive driver than I used to be, though. Sweetie, you're going to get hurt in that... Who's this? Sarl Huxon, nice to meet you. A Carter's friend from school. Yeah, Sarl needed a ride around. Got real prickly about me driving alone. So I let him tag along. It's a pleasure to meet you. And you? Why are you up here, Carter? Mom, I need to talk to you outside. Of course. I'll stay in here. Have Claire finish showing me around. Wait till you see how well decorated my bedroom is. Dope. What did you want to talk about? I promise not to freak. Carter, why would I freak out? Just promise, Mom. I promise. Okay, I'm... I'm going to take off my jacket... 
but do not freak out. Oh, you have wings! Wings that match our house. Carter, get inside. Don't freak out. Get inside. Three acres is not enough to avoid neighbors. Okay. Is your friend here to keep Claire distracted? Sort of. We got mixed up in some stuff. Jesus, Carter. I was hoping this wouldn't happen to you. What, Mom? Her. Bianca. So it's Bianca who's like me. Bianca has always been like you. N no, not like, not like this. You're both too soft, too gentle, always been too gentle. Mom, I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk down to me. I'm sorry. This is just another new thing. I was hoping it didn't affect the two of you. Far as I know, it hasn't gotten to Claire yet. She's young, but she's just like Bianca. She'll get it. Well, we should talk to Bianca about this. Like, I wish I would have known when I was younger. How did they happen? Car wreck. You wrecked the car? No, someone ran into our car. Bianca showed me how to fix it. You saw Bianca? No! Bianca taught me things. Oh, I knew I couldn't protect you from this forever. Look, Bianca, she's an elf. Elves have magic to make themselves more charismatic than your average person. So I fell in love with her. Probably because of the magic. She's a good person. I know you guys ended badly, but if magic made you fall in love, I don't think you could fall out of love from it. I didn't know you were suddenly a magic expert. Can I continue? Sorry. As I was saying, we fell in love. And it was after we were married, and you were on the way, I found out she was an elf. I had my suspicions beforehand, but it was difficult to believe. So I just chose not to think about it. One day, a few days before you were born, she told me that we might have problems with you. Because of who she was. She said she was Fae and specifically an elf, and she ran through a lot of what we might deal with with you. That you might be sickly and things might go missing when you were upset and, and that things changed terribly. She waited till after I was pregnant to tell me. Oh. But I loved her. I was committed to you and anything that might happen. I mean, I've kept you through everything. Was I a difficult baby? <sighs> you cried, nonstop, from the day you were born until the day you were ten. It was hard, with Bianca around just letting you cry. We, like so many young couples, didn't discover how different our parenting ideas were until it was too late. That was why we didn't work out, ultimately. She wanted to be too soft with you all. Said Fae children were different. I'm half-elf. Like a D&D &D character. You're half-human. But you're all cartwheel. Okay. Is there anything I need to know? Do you still drive with gloves? Yeah. Okay, good. Don't stop that. Well, yeah. It's sensory bad to touch the door handles. You're allergic to iron. And, of course, steel is made from iron. Why wouldn't you have told me that when I was a kid? Do not flutter your wings at me. You were already embarrassed being allergic to normal human stuff like milk and broccoli and tomatoes. I didn't want to throw something else in there. Mom, it's my body. You're my child. I don't want to see my baby hurt. So you let me think it was a mild symptom of autism instead of an allergy? It can be both things. You knew I had an allergy. I know what allergies are, Mom. <sighs> I tried my best to raise you when Bianca left. Let's not forget she left me alone with two little kids. She offered to take us for weeks, months, years, Mom. She wanted to see us. We wanted to see her. It wasn't safe. Why not? To spend time with our mama? I was your mother first. You're right. You did the best you could, and you can't help me anymore, and I don't want to put you at risk, or myself. Mom, do you know how difficult you are to live with some days? You sound like Claire. It's time I started listening to her. I don't know how she does it. She lives with you all the time. I'm sorry you find that so terrible. 
She does. She lives with your constant disingenuous advice and your nitpicking every little detail of us from our clothes to our allergies down to needing glasses. You are so mean. How can you be so mean? The world is not nice, Carter. I'm not going to let you go into the world and let it spit you out. You shouldn't have gone to college so far away from your mother. I lived further from Bianca for eight years. I wanted to see her. I wanted to hang out with both of you, with everyone. But you insisted we stay here on this dilapidated farm, that we stay home, that this was the only definition of home I ever got. You shouldn't change your definition. You lived with her here. <laughs> and this place looks nothing like when she lived here. Look at this deck. The floorboards are rotted. We plant entirely different things than when I was a freshman. Everyone has a different hair color now. We're different people. I don't want to be 10. Look at me. I'm 22, Mom. I'm an entirely different man. And Claire, she's different too. Claire had been stubborn since the moment she was born. Claire got the mischief and that side of Faye. You got the sickly side. She's going to be just fine. She picked herself up all by herself. She's put up with so much more of your antics than I have. Putting a roof over your head is not antics. Having a job, being a mother, is not antics. You've isolated her. She doesn't have friends or anything. She can never visit me because she's trying so hard to get out of here. She should get to go. Then why don't you both leave? I have spent a long time feeling bad for the way you make me feel. But you are so awful to me, and to my baby sister, and my mama. Sometimes you have to cut out people who matter. So I'm going upstairs to my room, taking my stuff out, and after today you can have it back. Make it the crafting you've always wanted. Make it anything but a shrine to the anxious little boy who lived here. You don't have to go anywhere. I'm sorry. You can stay here. <laughs> no, I can't. Bad things will happen if I do. Like what? None of your business. Carter! Carter! Come back downstairs! Okay, so for real though, I joined a Discord for Kitchen Witches. Oh, that's dope. I was in one for a while, but I don't think I could do a Kitchen Witch stuff. It wasn't my thing. Anyone can. Hey. Oh, hey. How'd it go? Claire. Did you know we're Faye? What the fuck? When did you get wings? About a week ago, I got in a car crash and grew wings. Bianca's an elf, so we're half elf and might grow wings. We're allergic to iron. I'll text you when I learn more. Adeline didn't want to tell us because she's mad that we like Bianca more. Because Bianca gave a shit. Adeline knew? So did Bianca, but that's another thing. Adeline knew, but didn't tell us. Do you want to come with us? With, with us? I, uh... We're in a... Very scary and dangerous quest to try to get Cyril's evil ex off our back forever. Carter, you can't kill people. With magic. It's a it's a banishment spell. I thought you didn't do magic. I'm not the spellcaster. Also, I never said I didn't do magic. I'm not a kitchen witch. I'm a siren. Here, g give me your water. Oh, cool. Tail. Wings and a tail. Like a bird. Two birds. Cool. Sorry, it's faster than you not believe in me for ten minutes. I got it, like, two weeks in. I'm bad at secrets. This is a lot. Really fast. How long have you been road tripping? Don't you have class? Sorry, I, I wasn't trying to do it like this. It's just... Things changed. Yeah, things changed. A lot. You don't have to come. But you don't deserve the bullshit. I don't want to be dependent on you. I've almost got enough to go away. Maybe Cali, maybe Colorado. Uh, if you want to move somewhere between both moms, why not Kentucky? Then you'd be like 17 hours from Carter. I want to be far away from Adeline. Adeline has never tried to visit her parents in Montana. I need roommates. I've got a witch and a fairy trying to move to Kentucky from Alabama. Emery's on their tail. They're good people. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Let's get the hell out of South Dakota. Where would you go?
none of your business? I'm taking the Tahoe I paid for, the table I paid for, and the curtains. I'll put everything else back the way it was. This is your home, kids. I wanted to pass it down to you. I don't want this one. I want one that belongs to me. Don't leave me all alone. I'm 20 years old. I haven't been able to have a life outside of you. Because I'm so worried about leaving you by yourself. You're still very young. You're 44. You've got two grown kids who deserve to be alone if they want to. It's better we just go, Mom. I don't want to be here. Did the freak with the tail talk you into this? <laughs> nah, dude. You're doing that yourself. Wish I was that powerful. I won't let you all leave. Uh, oh, okay, no. You're not going to hold them hostage. What the fuck? Adeline. Here by the start of day, by afternoon, you turn away. By afternoon, you turn away. Clock strikes one again, another chance for you to reign. Are you alone in vain? Are you alone in vain? What did you do? She just <laughs> walked away. Didn't say anything. Siren song. Um, what's going to happen to her? She'll leave you guys alone long enough to get your stuff out. It's not permanent. When I get far away, she'll be out of it. It's not going to hurt. No! It's not gonna hurt her. I'm not powerful, and I don't want to hurt her. Can I do that? Can I sing and she'll just leave me alone? No. That's the magic only a siren does. Destructive. This episode of Transmission Folklore was written by Mick Coates. Carter is voiced by Orion Ibert. Sarl is voiced by Mick Coates. Adeline is voiced by Aaron Roselle. Claire is voiced by Drew Ibert. Special thanks to our supporters on Patreon and Coffee. Find out more about how to support us and to access transcripts and captioned videos at transmissionfolklore.com. This episode's cryptid is the Joyless Hag. She wants to know why you're so skinny. Have you been eating enough?